The biggest issue that all of us are grappling with these days is call drop. A huge minus for you, me, and of course even TRI chairman Mr. Aris Sharma, who joins us today. So thank you so much for taking out the time. Thank you very much. Sir, this is a huge menace that is impacting everybody. But so, whom do you think could really be blamed for this? Is it the government who hasn't auctioned enough spectrum? Is it the industry who hasn't done enough in terms of fixing their networks? Or do you think is it actually the environmentalists who are creating a hassle as far as star installations are concerned? See, what we have done is that we have brought to, you know, one paper we have brought about a couple of days back, which essentially talks about compensating the consumers for call drops. And that's a consultation paper, and we, which we will sort of, we have called for suggestions till 21st of uh, this month, and thereafter we'll have one week for counter kind of proposals, comments. counter comments, and then we will finalize after having an open house discussion and things like that. That's one part. Secondly, we are bringing out a paper in about another two weeks, mm -hmm. or maybe about 10 days' time, wherein we are essentially analyzing this call drop issue in two cities, that is Mumbai and Delhi. Delhi. Yeah. And that's based on the data provided by the industry to us. It essentially talks of, you know, what are the, you know, what, are the, what is the extent of call drops in various areas. How bad is the situation? How bad is the situation? Mm -hmm. And also, potential you know causes to to have for this call drop so essentially what are the reasons why this these these drops are happening and what is the extent of those reasons mm -hmm. so in a way it's an analytical kind of paper which puts the call drop problem into a perspective of telling what the reasons are. It will allow you to fix the problem as well? Will you be in a position it to fix it? It will not allow me or TRAI to mm -hmm. fix the problem, but it certainly will you know, tell as to what are the potential causes are, and obviously the causes have to be resolved by the concerned stakeholders who have control on those causes. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's what it will do. The, the, uh, the consultation paper talks about whether or not there should be compensation uh, uh, for uh, call drops by consumers. So, of course, for consumers, it's a great, great uh, story. But do you think it's actually feasible to be able to do that? Is that possible? Sure, certainly it is possible. First of all, we are not asking the question whether it should be done or it should not be done. Mm -hmm. It is what we think is that the consumers, when they have signed up for and when they have taken up the connections, telecom connections, they have taken up on the understanding that they will get, you know, an uninterrupted service. When I talk to you on a telephone, obviously my understanding is that bearing few uncertainties where, uh, you know, either I'm driving very fast and mm -hmm. things like that. Typically, in a normal case, I will remain connected and will be able to talk to you. So if there is a call drop, obviously the consumers need to be compensated. Mr. What we are asking in that paper is as to what should be the methodology for right. compensation. How, how will you actually define and how will you actually find out compensation? We are currently hmm. limiting the call drops. Hmm. You see, call drops, uh, there are many multiple issues. One is, there are certain call drops which are triggered by the system. Hmm. Because the system is not able to take the call for some reason, there is a handover failure or there is some other reasons. So system driven drop is one part of the call drop. Mm -hmm. There are many other situations. For example, I am talking to you and the call quality reduces so bad that when I say, okay, let me disconnect and let me call you back from maybe landline or maybe the same phone. So that is, a, that is also in some sense a call drop happening due to the call quality being very bad. Right. But that is something which typically will not be possible to measure and say with certainty that when I reconnected you back within 15 seconds, it was because the call quality was bad. Maybe I remembered something and I called you back. Right. So that's, that, that's, we, are not, we are not focusing on these. We are just right. focusing on call drop driven by system which can be determined. Right. But sir, the companies are saying that, you know, TRI is, or, or let's say the broader issue is not really being addressed because spectrum scarcity or spectrum crunch is at the heart of this entire issue. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that. Okay. I, I certainly, while it is not anybody's case that there should be no spectrum, and there is a, certainly a case in which TRI has been saying to the government that 
you know, let's let's think of releasing more spectrum. So more spectrum needs to be released to the system. Mm -hmm. But to say that because there is no spectrum and therefore we will not be able to provide the service is not correct. Okay. Because ultimately there was a spectrum and the, the telcos when they took this spectrum, when they bid for this spectrum and signed up and, and could talk, they took the license, it was obviously they, they were aware of the fact that the spectrum is there and this call drop problem has happened, you know, it has aggravated during the last three, four months. Right. It is not as if in the last three, four months suddenly the spectrum has shrunk. Right. In fact, we have had uh, 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 spectrum auction a couple of months back. Right. So to say that the spectrum deficiency is the... What you think it's happened? a bogey that is being used by companies? No, I'm not saying it's a bogey. I'm mm. not, you know, let's not, let's not look at it a very you know, blame game kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Maybe there are reasons mm -hmm. which, which can be rectified. Mm -hmm. See, this is, I'm not saying as to what is the reason. Maybe there are technology reasons. Okay. Maybe there are tuning reasons. Some of my officers were telling me that, you know, it has happened because there is a migration taking place. Some operators which had a spectrum band X and they have now got a spectrum band Y and they are, you know, sort of migrating retuning and network. retuning. Hmm. So there may be some tuning lags which are happening. So I am not really the one who is, you know, telling as to what is the reason for these call drops and, and whether the spectrum availability, etc. I am not getting that question. I am only right. saying just to say that we can't fix the problem because there is no spectrum is not correct. So the industry is saying that if you compare the kind of spectrum holdings that a lot of people that their counterparts have in developed countries and what they have here is a minuscule amount actually. So you cannot have the same quality of service. So you mean to say that we should, we should continue and living with call drops? No, no, I'm saying no, that you know no, this. That, that's yes. not correct. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Six months back, mm -hmm. the same spectrum, less quantity than that was available to the industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six months back, the customers, maybe there are, you know, there's a growth which is taking place. Right. And that growth is a usual growth. That is not an unusual growth which is taking place in the last six months. Right. So what has gone wrong in the last six months? Mm -hmm. So one should ask that question. One should just not start finding out an alibi or finding out a reason as to why the call set suddenly start, started getting dropped. Would you be in favor of a penalty given that you know it has aggravated so much in the last six months impacting consumer uh, satisfaction? Yes, certainly. Do you certainly. Think why should not the consumers be, be compensated mm -hmm. for that? Mm -hmm. And it is technologically possible. Mm -hmm. If my call has dropped, I should be compensated. I mean, there are... TRAI has been using financial disincentives in the past right. to basically, you know, correct some of the issues. But but today, because the call drop, if if I my call drop happens, the system knows that it is my call drop, and system knows my number, system knows other details about me, and therefore, system should be able to technologically compensate me for that. So that's why we are saying. But sir, is, is it not a logistical nightmare? Look. Why should it be lost? You are able to, how many, you know, let's say DTH connections, right? Mm -hmm. You have large number of DTH connections. Right. In every connection, you are able to say that, okay, your connection is to ab about to expire in three days. Right. On every telecom, you are able to do the billing. Right. So it's all digital. Right. And once it is digital, numbers don't really matter much. Mm -hmm. You should be able to, you know, do a, a, an individual uh, sort of payment to individual accounts. It should not be difficult. What I'm saying is, it is still a consultation paper. Right, of course. TRAI does not pronounce judgments. Right, yes. So if the consultation paper brings out consumer disapproval of the concept mm -hmm. or everybody's disapproval of the concept, then we will not pursue with that. Right. So what do you think is the kind of time frame that you're looking at to really address this issue? Look, uh, the, the paper uh, basically calls for comments till 21st of right. September. And by the then end of the month? One, by yeah. the end of the month, we'll have the comments and counter comments. Right. Thereafter, we'll have the open house discussions and other kinds of internal discussions in the authority, and then probably we'll take a view. So we are looking at a time frame of, let's say, one and a half months, approximately one and a half to two months maximum. So a lot of people who, who uh, watch this sector very closely feel that at this stage, companies' balance sheets are stretched quite significantly. And if you add compensation to consumers, no matter how small it may be in proportion to their balance sheets, it definitely adds as an additional financial burden. Balance sheet should not be, you know, sort of supplemented by consumers, uh, you know, earnings which are not appropriate, right? Mm -hmm. Consumers are not responsible for putting the balance sheet. As far as, uh, I, I, I hope you are aware that the industry is having a, a gross, uh, more or less year-to-year -year growth of gross revenue of the uh, of the level of what 11% right 11% plus i'm told right. 
So it's not really, a, it's not as if things are not growing. Mm-hmm. And sir, what about the, the the main issue that continues to exist, which is about, uh, uh, you know, impacting the local bodies or, you know, right of way and all those issues? How, how do you think that can be addressed? See, uh, there are certain issues mm-hmm. on which both the industry, the regulator and the government will have to work together. Right. These two issues which I can immediately identify are, one is the issue of this scare from the, uh, you know, EMF radiation from the towers. Mm-hmm. Now that I have, you know, after joining here, I have looked into that issue and I am convinced that there is no study in the world thus far which conclusively says that there is a nexus between, you know, the health hazards happening due to tower emissions. Tower emissions. Hmm. The emission is so low in terms of power and, and so insignificant that this is merely a misplaced kind of fear which has happened. Hmm. Now because that fear has happened, it is necessary for us to present scientific evidence and scientific facts before the people to say that what, what is being perceived as a fear is not really appropriate. Right. And TRAI had brought out a paper on this issue some months right. back. What we will do, we will again go back to people, we will have discussions, outreach programs, and the government, uh, the Honorable Minister has also said a few months back in the interview right. that we need to have, you know, we can't have connectivity without towers. Right. And this, this whole issue of, uh, you know, health hazards or cancer happening due to towers is not really an appropriate, you know, conclusion which is being drawn. Right. The industry also has to do something about it. So that's one area where we'll work together. Right. Second area is certainly the area where the right of way mm-hmm. Uh, we need to find out some ways where it becomes easy for the companies to lay down their optical fibers to basically. So that's another area which we will work. And the Department of Telecom, because I was a member of the Telecom Commission earlier, right. the Telecom Department had called a meeting of all the state IT ministers right. and had emphasized upon them that if you want to have Digital India, it is necessary to have very uh, you know easy right-of-way policies. Right. And right-of-way should not be looked as a profit-making motive by the municipal corporations and right. municipal bodies. So that's another area which we have. We have opportunities to work together with the telcos and and the government. So you mentioned Digital India, something that you were very closely involved with till some time back. Do you think that stands to get hugely impacted given that the backbone of, of the entire uh, 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 drive really is connectivity and better connectivity? I think that the Digital India, one of the, as you rightly say, uh, the one of the fundamental things which digital india will require will be a broadband connectivity to right. our people and the uh, you know the consider the fact that you now have 1 billion plus mobile phones in the country mobile phones it's india the mobile first country where mobile is being used for for you know accessing internet in fact this could be one of the reasons why call drops are happening because you know more and more, more, more people are more coming on more, the net more and more people are coming that's mm-hmm. that's certainly we are going to analyze mm-hmm. And, and therefore, it is imperative that we have broadband connectivity in the country. Mm-hmm. Bharat Net is a program which is, you know, coming up and, and which I think will sort out the issues. But there are challenges, challenges of right of way, as you rightly say, mm-hmm. and uh, other challenges where we, we need to overcome them and we need to have accelerated uh, sort of uh, broadband uh, uh, spread in this country. So you mentioned that uh, TRI is actively looking at uh, releasing or has talked about releasing more spectrum to the uh, to the industry in the past as well and is doing so uh, on a continuous basis. How soon or what do you think is the right time to have the next round of auction uh, for spectrum? That is not for me to really uh, say. The government has asked us to sort of give recommendations on, on various pricing of spectrum, bands. various spectrum band to the prices which mm-hmm. we will be doing. Uh, with regard to the generic question, mm-hmm. the TRAI has been maintaining, and not not in the last one month, in many of course, authority has also, all along authority maintained. has been maintaining mm-hmm. that the government may consider making more spectrum available for communication purposes. So, communication. do you think there has to be a balance that needs to be uh, maintained between ensuring that prices of spectrum are not too high? That's a huge demand that the industry has all along maintained, that because this pricing of spectrum is so high, that their balance sheets are so stretched that they cannot invest in their networks as much as they would have ideally liked to? No, look, the price of the spectrum is not fixed by the government. I mean, right. the price is a normal normative price which is fixed. 
in any auction. Right. But actually, the what price the auction is sold is determined by the industry. Of course, the market dynamic. But as a regulator, as a regulator, no, as a regulator, I can't sort of say that you can't bid more than this particular thing. No, I'm saying that as a regulator, do you think that a, a, a fair no, no, uh, balance needs to be maintained? Let us understand that, as per the Honorable Supreme Court's order, right. all the spectrum is a natural resource. All natural resources and need to be auctioned. And which is being auctioned. Right. Now, when auction takes place, it is the industry itself which participates. So it is not the government or the TRAI which says that you don't bid or bid and all that. So that it, it's a market which decides the prices. Mm -hmm. So if the industry thinks that it becomes absolutely unviable at a beyond a particular point of time, they will exit. They will exit. Right. That's that's normal normal thing. So why should you blame the high prices? It's high prices are not being fixed by Mr. A or Mr. B. High prices right. are a natural consequence of open and transparent competitive process. So the government is, is, is contemplating that maybe the more release of spectrum should not happen till the time the call drop issue is addressed. Do you think the two issues can actually be correlated? You are the regulator. Do you think no, the sector... I have no views hmm. on that. I have seen the, hmm. it's, it's the prerogative of the government to basically, you know, uh, auction the, uh, the spectrum. So I, I really have no comments to make on that. And, and whether uh, they should be correlated or no correlated, I have no... You know, it's, it's, a, it's a view of the government and I have no comments to offer on that. Okay. So moving on, uh, some issues or policy decisions that are expected to be taken are like spectrum trading and m and uh, Do you think they should have been taken sooner than what, uh, uh, they should the, have been taken the, a long time the back? The decision relating to spectrum sharing has already been taken. Has been taken. So that, that's a very positive move in a positive direction. The, I'm sure uh, the, the government has, the TRI has already given its recommendation right. on the spectrum, you know, trading. Trading, and it yeah. Should, uh, it should happen soon, hopefully. I mean, but so ideally it should have happened a long time back, no, both m and trading? I can't, I can't make that kind of uh, judgment. Okay, sir. We leave it at that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you you're for welcome. your time, sir. <laughs>